the change in carbon as far as the program goes and its optical properties of nanostructured materials. And you are from here. Yes. Right. Thank you very much. Good morning to everybody. As she already says, there was a problem with the title of this, of this talk because uh, I believe there was a misunderstanding between different stocks. I will talk about this uh, subject that is optical properties of structural materials. In fact, what I want to talk to you is about the research we carry on here in the physical space physics group in the physics institute of this engineering faculty that maybe you have already uh, known just a little bit. Uh, then the summary of this talk that if I have enough time to try to, to tell to you is first of all introduce the reserve group group then uh, talk in general about nanomaterials and definitions and general concepts and then some examples first about nanostructural semiconductors where I will center the main part of the talk from synoxide, uh, a material that is currently being highly uh, investigated through all the world. And then at the end of the talk on uh, nanostructural metals, all of the, all, all the, the, the guide of the talk is results of our group, right? But it's some uh, general result of our group, mainly on optical properties. Then our group is mainly uh, have mainly five researchers, uh, some of them rather old, like myself and Professor Dalkieri that is over there, right? With whom we are working together for more than ten years. There are other members that are new incorporation to the group. We are in this building here. You already know where Uruguay is because you are here, right? But you may know that we are the country that is under Brazil, so we are keeping Brazil from falling to the south, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here is Montevideo, the city. I don't know if you have enough time to, to, to sightsee, but if the interior of Uruguay is rather green, like in this map, full of cows, right? You may already know that already. <laughs> and this is our flag. And this is our national team that you may already knew also. Right? Although more important than this color are this one that tonight you will we, you you may see it. I hope you see it in the streets. <laughs> eh? Oh, I, I forgot this is Peñarol, right? Peñarol, a uh, football soccer team, right? That is playing the Semi-finals, semi-finals of the Libertadores Cup tonight. Although uh -huh. Professor Dalkiri doesn't like it very much. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, this is our building that you may already know. We, we, we are in the Physics Institute, that is in the fourth floor of this, of this building, right? Uh, well, this is a map of the location. We are close to the beach. This is to, to, to take advantage that this is a winter summer school, so it's the beach for the summer. So I don't know why it's a winter summer school because we are in autumn right now, but that doesn't matter. Well, uh, going to the, to the research facilities we have here, in our group we have some uh, small laboratories, mainly for preparation of samples, that is. Uh, <coughs> The main uh, method for sample preparation we have here is electrochemical. But it's, that is what Professor Galkeli uh, works with. And some characterization uh, methods. I will be talking mainly on optical properties of the material prepared uh, here. And samples we uh, uh, change with some collaborators in other parts of the world. These are the students we, uh, we have for, for have worked with us. The one in yellow are the ones that 
that are working fully with us. Andrea is already with, with there uh, with the market. <coughs> this uh, these are our collaborators in other part of the country. So the results that we'll be showing are uh, collaborators with these groups. So then let's go to the uh, definition of what an nanomaterial is or in fact I put on the title nanostructure materials that is more or less the same like a nanomaterial. So what are nanomaterials? The definition that you may have found in this book on nanotechnology says that nanomaterials have great sizes in the order of one nanometer to 100 nanometers in at least one coordinate and normally in three. Right? Uh, well, here the implement word is grain. That in the same book, it says that all materials are composed of grain, which in turn compresses many atoms. But the main way of understanding what the nanomaterial is is to look at, uh, for example, in a scan electron microscopy, the structure of the materials, in this case, they are synoxide and structure. You will see grains that may even change the shape with some deposition parameter, in this case the electrochemical potential that is used when preparing these samples. And in fact, this material, synoxide, is very important because it can be constructed with many different shapes, like uh, rings, uh, nano tubes, and nano cases here, several different shapes, which changes the uh, material pool prepared, right? So to study this material, we need to, uh, we may have different uh, approaches, because there are materials that you can study both from the uh, molecular anatomic uh, point of view or the solid state physics point of view, more or less the same when preparing this material that you have two different approaches, the top-down approaches and the bottom-up. <coughs> and the main important uh, thing is there are important physical properties which vary with the characteristic length of the system. That is, when you change the length in the nanometric size, the properties of the material <coughs> change sometimes drastically, right? This is what is in the cover of the book of physics that when you have you are in the atomic range you have discrete energy levels while you when you are in bulk you have bands we are in the intermediate region that is uh, where we can see nanoscopic uh, I will show you some examples of, of one of the drastic change that is more uh, more easily seen in nanostructural semiconductors that when you have low dimensions the electronic state in the semiconductor are that like this <coughs> like in molecular systems in contrast what we have when you have a bulk system that you have uh, bands with a well-defined energy band gap <coughs> this makes that when you vary the dimension of the nanocrystal, you have an, a shift in the electronic energy positions that in the optical properties you measure it looking for absorption edge that shifts with the uh, semiconductor size. Uh, the usual dependence of this shift are an inverse relation with the square size of the material, this R here, I mean, this is uh, when you have the simplest model for this uh, energy shift, the parameters in this relation are what I call the exciton binding energy and the uh, exciton ball radius, that for different semiconductors and in this region, here I have an <coughs> example that I will show you in the following uh, slides. Uh, this is 
cadmium selenide, cadmium sulfide, and sinoxide. You see, as I uh, choice this material here, the exciton bor radius diminish, and the uh, binding energy increases. This, uh, this have uh, in this relation the importance of this dependence is that when you have a larger exciton binding energy, you can see the, the shift in energy for larger sizes, but as for uh, larger exciton binding energy, the binding energy, uh, sorry, for larger exciton bore radius, the binding energy is smaller, so the shift is smaller. Then you can see uh, the this shift for larger sizes, but the shift is smaller. In the case of sinoxide, you need smaller uh, crystal sizes, but the shift is large. I will show you this this effect in the following slides. Then let's go to. Uh, <coughs> These examples of this uh, effect in transparent semiconductors. <coughs> First, I will be, uh, remind you about the optical properties of semiconductors, uh, mainly 2, 6, and 3, 5 binary uh, alloys. The more important thing is that the energy band up depends uh, on the composition. And it's the energy markup that determines the color of the light emission in such semiconductors. Here you have a typical graph that shows how the band gap energy depends on the composition of the materials. You can expand a very large region, changing the composition using, for example, two six semiconductors. These uh, are some examples of the of less with different compositions and different light emission that you can use to make well uh, the finer uh, spectral uh, light sources, right? <coughs> but not only the emission depends on the energy band up, also the color of the material, for example, a thin film, different compositions change the final color of the material. Here, I show you two different samples with different composition that have different colors, but also the uh, nanostructure of the, <coughs> oops, of, the crystalline, um, of the crystalline material may change the color. That is, because it shifts the absorption age, uh, as I show you in a previous Light. This is why we uh, have a very important application, for example, when I call tandem solar cells, that when you have one semiconductor, the spectral current intensity you will have have this shape. This is the schematic representation of the solar spectrum. Then you can match the band of energy to uh, absorb more efficiently the light, but if you can construct cells with different materials, then you will have this kind of spectral current generated in the cell, then you can generate, uh, have cells that absorb the light more efficiently. <coughs> I will also want to remind you how we measure absorption edge and energy gaps in a direct semiconductor, you usually have this dependence, dependence, dependence of the absorption coefficient with the photon energy, H nu. Then if you make a plot of this kind, you will have a line that when it cuts the zero absorption you will determine by this method the band up energy. Something similar coming up for indirect materials, these are usually called tau plots. 
that allows you to measure bang up, bang up energy and then absorption edges. Then let's see some examples of this uh, shift. This is in fact uh, quite uh, known uh, result for colored materials where you can see that varying the sizes of the nanoparticles in colored solutions, semiconductor colored solutions, you vary the absorption edge in this figure. The size of the nanocrystal increase in this direction, so the, you have a shift of the absorption edge to the largest energy, as I uh, told you before. This can be represented more qualitatively in this figure that shows different uh, nanocrystals with different sizes, smaller sizes in this direction. And then this is photoluminescence of these nanocrystals that you have larger energy emission as the nanocrystals are smaller, right? But this is uh, for colloidal semiconductors. What I want to show you is the same effect in thin films materials. Here you have, for example, films on <coughs> uh, carbon uh, sulfide, that is a material that has cut to structure. This sample were prepared by chemical bath deposition. And by in the temperature of the deposition, you can see that there is a uh, shift of the energy position. That if you graph it, the bank up energy determined from this spectrum here for different samples, the dependence with uh, the grain size, with <coughs> from uh, X-ray diffraction, <coughs> and I used to see that you have more or less a dependence that goes with the inverse of the square of the size of the nanocrystal. That was the relation I showed you before. In fact, uh, the blue book here correspond quite close to the one I showed you before, putting in that curve the, the value for the binding energy and the exit on board radius that I uh, showed in the previous slide. Another newer example, we have uh, started more recently, recently is a similar result for Cadmium selenide, that is an hexagonal material, right? Uh, here we, we saw one of the co authors of the paper that he has uh, came more recently to this talk. These are some uh, fields of the, of the nano structure of the materials, right? Uh, here, these different samples were prepared with different electrochemical uh, deposition, applied electrochemical voltage, and you have a dependence on the size of the nanostructures. That is here, this group with the uh, sample preparation parameter, that is the applied voltage. Then here you can see also a dependence of the band up energy with the size of the nanocrystal, right? It's more or less the same as I showed you before. The only way that these uh, curves uh, have no uh, fitting parameter is the, the theoretical curve that directly depends on the parameters I put in the previous slide, right? Okay. So then, what I'm showing you here is that you can slightly shift the absorption edge with the crystalline size. <coughs> I, I have shown two examples, carbon sulfide and carbon selenide. Then, I will try to concentrate into the, not only the shift with the crystalline size, 
but other properties on sinusoid, right? Another two six semiconductor. Uh, sinusoid is a very exciting material. It is being quite investigated in the literature. I want to convince you of that with the following uh, two graphs that are the result of making uh, a search in, in this enzymes that allows to, to, to search for uh, uh, international publication. Wait. Here you have the result of searching zinc oxide is the composition of the material in the two, in two different enzymes, and, the, and then you see that, okay, depending on of the, of the database you are searching, the number of publications in this material have grown almost exponentially with uh, time, right? This, there is a lot of research on, the, on, this, on this material. One year ago, when I when I showed this same slide in another talk, I was rather uh, wo uh, worried because it seems that it came to saturate the, this this research. But now you see that this year or last year it got increased again, so it's, it's still a very active area. <coughs> For this reason, this sinusite has been called the herald of the metallic oxides. The question is why there is so, more, so much research on this material. The motivation for this, uh, the research of this sinusite is that, first of all, it has quite interesting optoelectronical properties because it's a 2,6 semiconductor oxide, uh, as I told you in the previous uh, slide, that means that is an example of semiconductor oxide that are uh, transparent conductor materials. It is usually N-type, that is, you have uh, electron in excess. You can uh, drop Drop it, drop, drop it quite easily with aluminium, gallium, or indium, but it's not quite clear why, uh, how you can drop it to be p-type, so you can have pn junctions to make uh, devices. There are uh, many materials and many research on this way. Maybe this is a the most difficult or, or, or what we what it guides the, the research that I show you in the previous slide, right? The main reason is that this uh, p doping is not easily reproduced, reproduce, right? One of the most important uh, properties of the material is that it have a and of energy in the region of the UV. So it's a transparent material with an intermediate refraction index, about two, that is quite low for semiconductors, but rather high for transparent materials. Moreover, the excitomagnetic energy, as I already said in a previous slide, is on the order of 60 milli electron volt. The 60 milli electron volt is important or are important because uh, they are higher than the thermal energy at room temperature, that is 26 milli electron volt. So <coughs> then you can have exciton in the material at room temperature. I have already mentioned that they exciton board radius is 20 Armstrong. Moreover, it has an external crystal structure with these uh, constants. For 
for the dimension C and A in this lattice. But meant that this C over A ratio is 1.6, that is quite different than the 1.633 corresponding to a compact hexagonal structure. So it has a rather deformed structure in comparison with the compact hexagonal lattice that make very important uh, for property where you, you don't uh, want to have uh, in inversion symmetry, right? For this reason, we have several applications in barristers, optical coating, solar cells uh, in different ways, piezoelectric transducers, UV and blue light emitters, because you have the band of energy in the Ultraviolet pressure. Also, phosphors, because that's not have only light emission in the blue and UV, but also it the midnight from defect in the green and red. So you may have the three colors uh, with this material. Then uh, it has a big thin film transistor with the material. It has also application in gas sensors, nanomechanical devices, and others, right? Then I want to show you some uh, examples of this material used, prepared by electrochemical deposition, right? This is our first work of the material where it was prepared over a silicon substrate, right? The, this is the crystalline structure that corresponds with the hexagonal lattice. And here you have the optical properties where you can see a clear absorption edge in close to 375 nanometers, which corresponds with 3.3 electron volts. The most important thing is this, that this absorption edge shifts. Uh, the, with many parameters of the deposition method. For example, here I show you how you can shift the absorption edge changing only the thickness of the material, right? As the, the thickness increase, the absorption edge shift into the red or on the contrary, and the thickness of the thin film decrease, the torsion edge goes deeper into the ultraviolet region. We have interpreted the result that <coughs> because there is some change in this C over A relation <coughs> in the constant of the X-ray diffraction spectrum, this is the level expected for sinoxide. The material have many defects, basically, basically interstitial zinc that uh, act as a uh, end doping defect, generating what is called most bulletin effect that results in a shift of the absorption age due to uh, band film effects. This is current with some observation of an increase or an increase of the resistivity of the material with the thickness due to uh, the population of this uh, band with electricity. Another example I want to show you is for oxide, the dependence of the absorption edge is the crystalline size, right? more or less the same effect as I showed you before for cadmium selenide and cadmium sulfide, right? <coughs> Here is the diffraction, X-ray diffraction data, where using shear formula we can uh, see that there is an increase of the mean size of the nanocrystal in the uh, films with the temperature 
of the uh, cell where the samples, the samples are prepared. There's an increase of this filter site with this temperature. And also, there is a shift of the absorption edge with the same uh, temperature. So we try to correlate the absorption edge with the sizes. And there is a more or less uh, square uh, dependence on the band apparency with the inverse square of the size of the uh, crystals. But when we try to use, to compare the experimental point with the theoretical hooks I uh, showed you before. The problem is that the shifts here are larger than the one we have uh, from the theoretical curve. This well, was usually when we are searching for an effect, the effect we, we see primarily is smaller than, than, the, than the predicted theoretically. But in this case, we, when we can observe it, it the, the, a consequence of the fact that we are measuring the sizes and the absorption rate from different properties, but the sizes are measured from uh, X ray data, the absorption rate is measured from the optical properties. The smaller crystal enhance the optical properties, so in the Optical property, the smaller crystals are more important, while in the X-ray diffraction, the larger crystals are more important to absorb. So in this point, mainly we are measuring some mean in a distribution of sizes that we have in the in the material. So uh, in the optical property, the, the mean value shift to the smaller sizes. While in the X ray diffraction, is in the contrary, so for this reason, the shift is enhanced in this sample. Well, now let me show you some results, some similar results on this uh, shift of the absorption edges with the uh, crystal dimension, but for some preferred by another, uh, another method, Solhe. Here, in this case, they are nanometric sinusoid filaments. They are nanometric in thickness, so the absorption edge is very small, right? But here also we can see that there is a shift in the band of energy with the crystal size. That if we, if we use this uh, same relation as previously, we have a dependent that more or less follows the experimental results. But here we have two kinds of samples. The red points that are undoped samples, <coughs> and the other points that are different aluminum doped samples. So we can, when we obtain this, we decide to try to introduce a correction to this formula that is called the Bruce correction, which includes electron point interaction in the material. Then, now, the curve is, does not agree very well with the experimental data. But then we, if we shift the curve to pass through this point, it goes more or less between all of the materials, between all of the points. But moreover, if we construct one curve for the double sample and another, another one for the aluminum double sample, we have quite a better agreement that then we can understand as, as, as that we have not only the crystal effect but also a doping effect due to the most important effect that I told you before. Uh, now I want to show you some more newer results on uh, nanowire single site nanowire samples prepared combining post chemicals, salt heads, and electrochemical composition. <coughs> These samples were prepared <coughs> electrochemically, right, but from a seed layer prepared by the salt method. Here you have an image that shows you uh, 
and an award, in one case and another, that have different uh, sizes. Here are the distribution of the, uh, of the sizes of the nanowire. In the case of this sample called X, there is a sanative introduced in the solution in a solution method that allows to control the size of the nanocrystal, then the nanowire also are, have smaller diameters. These are uh, optical transmitter spectrum. In this case, there is no quantum effect. Uh, the band of energy does not depend on the uh, diameter of the wire. That is because the waves are on the order of hundreds of nanometers or tens of nanometers, quite larger than the exit of the, the exit of more radius. But the more important thing we see here is that there is not only the edge, the absorption edge, but it's also a continuous increase in the transmitter that comes from the dispersion of light from the nanowire, right? This uh, in the literature is said it can be used to enhance it, the absorption of light if you dope this material with some active semiconductor. That is what we're trying to do now. Some research we are currently carrying on. Carrying on. Here you can see the absorption edge of sinoxide. And in this case, carbon sulfide was used, was grown inside the material. So you have also an absorption edge due to carbon sulfide. Then I want to change, talk you about nanoporous material, nanoporous material go, going on, going to the preparation methods of nanostructures metals. If you remember, the, you, we have two types of semiconductor, direct semiconductor and indirect semiconductor. Silicon is usually an indirect semiconductor that you know can be easily light, but all of silicon is a material that uh, emits strong light. <coughs> what I want to show you here is some machines of silicon nanowires that have also strong emission in the uh, red, like in the case of porous silicon. Another porous material we are working is are nanoporous aluminum, right? that is prepared electrochemically, this nanoporous aluminum have more blue or green light emission, but what is more important, this nanoporous aluminum is consists of well-ordered pores in the structure of the uh, material that can be used as a template for growing material inside these pores that can have diameters on the order of very few tens of nanometers. Then this template can be used to grow, for example, uh, metals inside these uh, ordered structures that you, you can use, for example, to prepare photonic crystal. I want to show you uh, in the minutes that can be remaining. I don't know how much you have. Right? Okay. Now to show you some results on this uh, metallic nanoway arise. Here are some results on copper nanoway arise. Prepared uh, growing uh, copper nanowires inside those uh, nanoporous template. <coughs> Here are uh, the nanowires that have diameters in the order of uh, hundreds of nanometers, two hundred of nanometers. These nanowires uh, here, I am showing you some uh, scanning electron microscopy images of the wires where the the template used to grow it was uh, dissolved, right? But the optical property I show you here is for the Composite material, copper inside aluminium. Here I compare the spectrum of its copper, aluminium, aluminium nanostructure. 
will have an increased uh, reflectance in the uh, in the in the UV ratio, blue and UV ratio that we have interpreted to be due to the uh, periodic structure of the uh, composite material. Here are some other uh, examples of silver nanowires in this case. Here are some images. The color of the sample of silver nanowire is yellow, and the spectra show not only a small increase of the reflection into the infrared region that gives this typical uh, spectrum, but also you have peaks to correspond to plasma resonance, super plasma resonance in the nanowires, right? <coughs> Another example of this plasma resonance in metallic uh, nanowires is this more recent result of cobalt nanowires that where well, we can see that the plasma resonance shift depending on the uh, cobalt quantity in the uh, samples. Well, to ending uh, this panoramic talk on, on, on examples of things we are working on here, I want to show you what we are working currently in trying to <coughs> fabricate selective surface for uh, solar energy to thermal conversion. The most uh, common example is to have inside this uh, porous uh, structure some me metal aggregation, for example nickel, that give you this typical spectrum that absorbs light in the visible uh, region, while it reflects light in the infrared, so you have a selective behavior quite appropriate for uh, energy uh, heating, right? Solar energy heating. What we're trying to do here in this area, well, uh, this um, selective behavior is due to interference <coughs> in the different layers you have here in this composite material. What we're trying to do right now is to correlate the composition profile in the sample, measured from XPS measurement, right? With the optical property. So, uh, from the profile, we deduce a theoretical group that we correlate with the uh, experimental measurement. This is an attempt to try to design the material that is, design the uh, composition profile that will allow us to have an optimal uh, reflectance spec. Well, this is all what I want to tell you. So, just to review what I have talked about, I have <coughs> talked about nanostructured materials, showing you that it's possible to modify material physical properties manipulating material structure at an anonymous level. I should give the different examples of what we are working uh, currently. And in semiconductors, I show you that the absorption X, that is the color, varies in composition and structure, size, when this size is in the order of 1 to 10 nanometer. I concentrate mainly in synoxide, that is a transparent semiconductor oxide with many potential applications. I show you also some uh, basic results on uh, nanoporous material, but more importantly, uh, nanoporous alumina can be used as a template to grow different kinds of uh, nanowires, mainly metallic. And I also show results on uh, semiconductor nanowires of sinusite and silicon. Uh, finally, I put some examples of how we can construct selective surface with this material. Well, uh, <coughs> thank you very much. I know that the talk was very generous because I know you will have uh, a 
course for some lectures in, in Corrientes, and maybe you may uh, see more deeply the effort. That was just to try to show you what we are working here. Hope you, you can talk with us in, in case you have any entry to end the nourishing of the financial agencies that allow us to work in this area. So, thank you very much. Thank you. question I can show you more results. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 